the history of the people from the Rasselhog region of the Inner Sphere, their short-lived republic, and even as a meshed clan and Inner Sphere society, has been filled with almost insurmountable challenges. Forged from systems wedged between the Lyran Commonwealth and the Draconis Combine, the Rasselhog Republic existed for less than 20 years before bearing the brunt of the invasion of the clans. From 84 systems, the Republic was eventually crushed down to just 7 by 3052. Most of those who had fought hard for their Rasselhogian identity and independence were now locked into clan occupation zones with no relief in sight. Even with the Comstar Truce putting a temporary halt to the invasion, it was entirely reasonable to expect that the Rasselhog Republic experiment would come to an end. Still, the Rasselhog spirit is legendary, and they wouldn't go down with a fight, nor forget those who were in their occupied territory. In 3062, there was an effort by the Free Rasselhog Republic's 2nd Cavalry to procure cage battle armor from the Taconis Combine. The popular light battle armor design had seen great success as a force multiplier. Unfortunately, the purchase offers were rebuffed by the increasingly paranoid Combine. Looking elsewhere, Avistre Jack Coslo turned to the SLDF and Comstar with a plan to go in together on a new battle armor design. The SLDF and Comstar would contribute their facilities and technical know-how, while the Rasselhog Republic would provide funding and materials. The resulting design would be shared by all three. Progress on the new battle armor was swift following its start in July of 3062. By May of 3065, there were functional prototypes and preliminary production was started on what would be known as the Cobalt. Initially, an attempt to mimic the capabilities of the cage, the Cobalt grew into its own as a unique design. The light battle armor weighs in at 750 kilograms, matches the standard clan elemental's ground speed and jump distance, and is equipped with two armored glove manipulators. It includes 275 kilograms of basic stealth armor, which is decent for a light battle armor design. Remember, the goal of these light scout suits is to avoid being shot at entirely, if at all possible. Still, it's nice to have that 5 plus 1, since no plan survives contact with the enemy. The Cobalt ended up being a useful unit for light recon, and depending on the loadout, a decent frontline infantry design. Though the SLDF ended up pulling out of the project, Comstar and the Rasselhog Republic put it into full-scale production by 3069. Soon, Rasselhog units were receiving shipments of the armor, and they could be found across the Republic's forces. The timing ended up being perfect as the Rasselhog units would face down the Word of Blake both inside and beyond the borders of the Republic. Battle reports are favorable, showing that units consisting entirely of soldiers in Cobalt battle armor were more than capable of holding their own against the Blakists. In 3075, the Kobold was instrumental in clearing Galatian City of Blakists and their hired mercenaries, often using tactics learned from the Blakists themselves earlier in the conflict. The battle armor's equipment and weaponry options underline the focus of the Kobold on squad-based tactics. Each suit in a standard unit of four has a modular weapon mount which can carry a small laser or a micro grenade launcher. In the left arm, one of each squad can be armed with either a light target acquisition gear module, a flamer, or a small pulse laser. The other members of that same squad can carry an AP weapon of their choice in the armored gloved hand. The addition of that support weapon can add a significant punch to that cobalt infantry squad and platoon once you start massing their fire. That small pulse laser would be a menace to opposing infantry formations and even armored units and that flamer would make short work of trenches filled with flammable enemies who have not yet been self-actualized as s'mores. And of course, don't underestimate the ability of a well-placed tag to ruin someone's day. Considered the father of the cobalt armor, Jack Coslo was both instrumental in its design and production, but also led his soldiers in the field using it. When you see someone using the technology they invented, it does tend to be comforting. Even though he was 60 years old by the time the suit was ready, he went through all the processes to get certified in it and fight alongside his men. In the years following first production, there have been a couple of notable upgrades to that standard Cobalt design. This is to be expected for such a versatile unit. In 3076, Comstar researchers decided to try marrying some of their existing Cobalt battle armor units they had with the battle armor C3I targeting computer. In order to do that successfully, some armor was cut, dropping the protection to a 4 plus 1 instead of the 5 plus 1, 
If you're thinking, wow, that's a big line to cross, as now medium lasers are deadly, you're not alone. Even the Comstar designers recognized the cost of that armor reduction, though things still moved forward. The end result was a Kobold that was only armed with a single AP weapon, but it could participate in that C3I network. Now, reports in the field testing showed that this effectively boosted battlefield command and control, though, for that individual soldier, it became crucial that they focus on avoiding incoming fire and basically staying out of the way. The complaints about the sacrificed armor plagued the design, and it became increasingly clear that the Cobalt just wasn't the best possible platform for the C3I. Following the final victory over the word of Blake, Clan Ghost Bear sought to consolidate power and become more isolationist. After experiencing the terror that Blakeists unleashed, that's pretty understandable. The Bears used diplomacy, compromise, and occasionally a firm fist over two decades to take what had been an occupation zone and forge it into a functional state. These efforts were aided by the fact that many were completely exhausted by war and the hardship that it had caused. Though not without significant complications, eventually that Ghost Bear Dominion officially became the Rosselhog Dominion, and the resulting state showed a significant amount of cooperation and meshing of clan and intersphere societies. Even though the Dominion was not outwardly aggressive, that didn't mean the Bears were idle. By the dawn of the Ill Clan era, the Rosselhog Dominion had a military that could rival its neighbors, and their presence on the edge of the Republic of the Sphere forced Alaric Ward to be wary of them in his drive toward Terra. As it turns out, Khan Dahlia Becker was also a recipient of that method for crossing the jump ship barrier into the Terran system, but they chose not to participate in the fight via the Ill Clan. One of the other consequences of the meshing of Ghost Bear and Rosselhog was the blending of technology. The Cobalt Armor is a great example of this as the 2C version of the Light Battle Armor retains that 5 plus 1 armor, but with improved stealth capabilities. It also has an Electronics Countermeasure Suite, which only adds to the armor's ability to participate in Operation Sneaky Sneak. In the arms, a light machine gun is the Cobalt 2C's only weapon, but being able to extend that fire out 180 meters isn't too shabby. In the other arm, a light tag allows the Cobalt pilot to act as an artillery spotter, and finally, instead of jump jets, the Cobalt 2C has a VTOL system which can carry it up to six hexes. This automatically makes it my best friend. You guys wanted VTOLs to make a comeback, right? This is what you meant, I presume. With those upgrades, the Cobalt 2C is a very attractive option for Battlefield Commander. The mobility and stealth would make things very challenging for a foe that is wondering how all that indirect long-range missile fire is so accurate, or why everything seems to be catching on fire when those Aero 4 missiles begin to airburst just above their heads. I'm really happy that the Rosselhog Dominion has the Cobalt and its 2C version. They needed some wins after the way Alaric did them dirty in the Ill Clan boat. Maybe we can see some Cobalts piloted by Rosselhog troops on Terra someday when Alaric goes full madman. What do you think of the Cobalt? Have you used it in the game? If you did, tell me how it turned out. Big thanks for watching, hitting all the buttons so that the nonsense can keep flowing. Extra 2C version of thanks for those who are able to take that extra step to become channel members, which makes a big difference. Even at that lowest tier, it beats the ad revenue generated by many of the videos. Until we meet again, likely with another set of battle armor, take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.